Hey, how you doing? My name is Emilio. Thank you so much for spending the time today to watch this video. We're gonna be showing you how to build a home lab. Now this is a bit more of a corporate-y, uh, enterprise-y sort of a home lab. So we've actually got some more enterprise grade servers and storage and switches and things like that. So we're gonna be showing you that today. So we'll be covering a little bit of stuff in this video that you find helpful. Um, but look, if you're perhaps new to technology, um, you're getting started or you're wanting to learn more about technology, if you wanna learn more about the tools of the trade that IT people would use and the skills and the knowledge that IT people would use, check out my description because I do have a number of training courses uh, that you may find helpful. Um, I've recorded a number of hours worth of training courses around really a systems administrator toolbox that covers a whole range of stuff around servers, storage, networking. We're talking about domain controllers, DNS, Active Directory, a whole bunch of other things. We talk about interview tips and what you should sort of know to become that next level IT professional. So do check those courses out. I've also got an awesome course all around Windows Server 2019, which is the latest operating system as of this video anyway. Uh, so you can learn all about Windows Server 2019, how to configure it, how to install it, how to build your own domain controller, how to build a DNS server and how it all sort of works and hopefully gives you a good understanding around Windows Server administration. So if you're wanting to get started with a lab environment of some sort, now you can use something similar to what I've set up previously. You can actually check out one of my other videos right up here on how to set up a smaller version of a home lab. We can pick up some really small equipment and you can even use some old desktops, some old laptops, even an old switch that you may have to actually set up a lab at home and then go and build all the equipment that you need, go and configure VMware, build Windows Server, build Linux servers, etc. Um, but for very, very cheap, you can go online, check out eBay, check other uh, selling sites online, wherever you may live, and you can pick up stuff like this very, very cheap, being a server rack or a network comms cabinet, uh, and then some cheap equipment right here. This particular one is an 18RU server cabinet, which essentially is the dimensions inside, the amount of rack units you can actually install inside of the unit. Now this particular um, server cabinet, the rack itself, I picked up very, very cheap online, secondhand, so you don't even have to go and buy yourself a brand new one, uh, but I like to have something like this that allows me to actually go and install uh, the server equipment uh, and the network switches and things like that that we could set up in a lab environment. There are other options. A lot of people do a DIY option. Um, one that I've seen very, very popular is called a lac rack, which is essentially some lac uh, tables that you can buy from Ikea, very, very cheap, and the dimensions just fit just right with uh, servers and network switches and routers, etc. Uh, so you can do one of those, but I like something that's a little bit more sturdy, something that I can actually install further racks inside. I can install fans, I can do power and cable management very, very easily. So something like this is really, really good. I've got myself a, uh, a SAN or a NAS. This is a Synology NAS unit itself. I've got three 1RU servers, and I've also got a couple of switches, a Nekia as well as a Cisco switch. So we're gonna be getting all of these set up in here. We're gonna getting them cabled, network cables. We're gonna be making sure that they're set up correctly with power as well. Uh, and then all of that is gonna be racked within this particular rack. This, excluding the NAS itself, all of this stuff cost me just over $100 uh, Australian give or take will be just under that in US. So it was very, very cheap to pick up really three servers and a couple of uh, network switches, both of these being gigabit switches, which just makes it even better. But you can pick up some really cheap Cisco switches, even the older 2950s and 2960s, really, really cheap. You could probably pick them up for about 10, 15, $20 uh, on eBay, very, very cheap. And then you got some um, earlier servers as well. And the great thing with having something like this is you're actually using enterprise equipment. Um, you know, of course, if you set up your own smaller home lab, uh, you're not going to have server grade equipment more or enterprise grade equipment. While this, even though they are older servers, they can still run things such as VMware's ESXi, they can still run Linux, they can, they can still run Windows Server, and you can play and build all of this 
within a lab environment. Now on top of this, I've also got a few desktops that I'm gonna set up and a couple of older routers that I'm also gonna set up because I wanna set up my own routes, my own separate VLANs and a separate Wi-Fi network, which is really, really helpful. If you do have any spare routers, that's a really good thing that you could use with them. At the very bottom, here we've got a Synology NAS. This is an older NAS. This is an RS2212 Plus. Uh, and as you can see right from the front, you've got slots here to actually install hard drives. So you can just pull these out. These are just standard trays. You can then go and screw a hard drive into here goes right back into there. And then once you uh, log into this particular Synology NAS, you can go and configure different sorts of RAID groups uh, and different sorts of configurations there around storage pools. And then you can essentially get um, your devices on your network to use the storage on here. Now, if you do want to know more about uh, a NAS or a SAN, you can check out one of my other videos uh, right at the top there where I go into a little bit more detail uh, around the differences between a SAN and a NAS. There are three 1RU servers. Of course, RU being the rack unit. So this is the, this is essentially a one rack. All right, this is one RU. If you've got two of them, then that's a two RU and that's a three RU, et cetera. And of course, servers can come in a wide range of sizes. These particular ones are rack-based servers, which means that they are longer. A blade server could be like half of this. And then you've got tower servers, which sort of look more like your traditional PCs, but just a little bit larger. So this one, uh, as I said, are one RU units. And uh, these are three different Dells. Some of these are pretty old. Um, but again, you can pick these up really, really cheap online, which makes it very, very good to be able to go and build uh, something in a lab environment. Each of these three have got Xeon processors, which are pretty common within server products uh, for the Intel range anyway. And you'll see at the front, there's a number of different things. If you've never seen a server before, you've obviously got USB ports, you've got a VGA port, so you can actually run an external screen if you so need to. There's things around information. So this one's got a nice little LCD display on the front that gives you warnings and lets you know when the, you know, when the servers are healthy. This particular one has two and a half uh, inch hard drives. Well, the top ones are more built into the unit. So you'd have to actually open these up to actually uh, get access to the actual top of these particular units. And then there's a couple of gigabit switches, one being Cisco and the other one being Nekia. And of course, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cable all of these three units up, uh, the three servers, as well as the NAS to actually then connect over to our switches and then create our network. So here we got a little bit more of a detailed view of what our server rack looks like. Now this particular one is going to be used to actually rack the equipment that I've got, the SAN, as well as the servers and our switches. And we're just gonna be just putting that stuff into here. Some things will be railed. So some things will actually have the rails and clip into these. Three of these make up a one RU unit. Six of these make up a two RU. And on the bottom, we've also got a tray here where some equipment that is not going to be racked will sit on top of the tray. So for example, my NAS, my Synology NAS, uh, I don't have the rails for that. So that's just gonna be sitting on the bottom here. So all of our equipment has been racked. Uh, of course, we've got the servers and the storage and the uh, switches and then our old equipment, our old desktop. We've got our, one of our old routers, another router at the very top. And I want that one at the top because that's gonna be my second Wi-Fi network, essentially another Wi-Fi network for my lab environment. Of course, if you have the router inside of here, the Wi-Fi router, then the antenna, uh, the signal goes out and it's hitting the, the metal frame of the rack and you can have some signal issues and signal degradation. So this is now ready to go. So the next step now is to go to the back of the rack itself to cable it all up, to power it all up, and then we can start to use this equipment. So everything is now racked, uh, ready to go. We've cabled everything. Uh, we've got our dual powers. We've got our multiple ethernet connections into each of the devices so that we can easily set all this up within our environment. Now we are gonna be using these all within a, a virtualization setup. So we're gonna be running things such as VMware's ESXi onto these. And then down the very bottom, we've got our power board uh, that is just running into a standard power board. Now, of course, if you're doing this in a lab demo test environment, you can use something like this standard power board that I've picked up. But I would recommend if you're doing this for production, if you're doing this in a business, if you're gonna be running your lab uh, for long periods of time, then I would go and invest in an actual uh, better quality uh, power board 
uh, power racks. Uh, you can actually get power rails that actually, you know, set up into the actual left and to the right of the rack itself. They're called PDUs as well, uh, to actually have something that is a little bit more sturdy and pretty uh, common because what you'll find is in businesses, we don't recommend using power boards inside server racks. And if you yourself work in technology and you work in a business that is using standard power boards in a rack environment, get rid of them, go and buy proper ones that have, you know, um, you know, like proper distribution of the power. They will spark automatically if there is a, um, you know, like a power surge, things like that. You want something that is a little bit better quality. The top of my rack, here is the top of my rack. I've actually mounted a monitor arm so that I've actually got a monitor always connected to the front of the rack. It just makes it a bit easier when you do actually have a uh, screen available that you can easily just run into any of the servers, into anything that's in here, uh, and actually control this stuff right from the front of the unit as well. Now, it doesn't need to be on a monitor arm, of course. If you've got a screen, a spare screen that you're not using, just sit it on the top. You could even put it inside of the rack itself. A lot of people do sit them inside of a rack on top of a switch or on top of a server, for example. Uh, and then that way it's just very easy that, so that you can actually run a cable into the front or into the back of a server for managing. So front of the unit, ready to go. Here we go. We've got a couple of our switches right here. You'll see that they're nicely cable tied. Uh, we've got our Cisco, then with our neck gear on the top, and we've got some cables on the left hand side, some cables on the right hand side. And the reason I like to do that is just to make it a little bit neater uh, so that when I am cable tying, but in some cases, you may wanna do this intentionally because for example, you could have these ports on this Cisco switch be on one particular VLAN to be able to access a specific service, for example, and then the ports on the right could be accessing something different. So. What you can find, what is common, um, and if you want to set this up yourself, is you could have, say, all these ports will be all of your desktops and your laptops out in a in a business, for example, and then your devices on your right could be your servers, for example. So you could actually have them split across the two. Uh, so we're going to be doing that when we are setting this up, but we've also just done this just so that it's a little bit neater, so that all the devices that have got Ethernet and things on the right-hand side are all being routed through the back. They're all actually tied together to make it neat. And then on, on the right-hand side of these switches, and then on the left-hand side, if there's any Ethernet on that side, as well as the, you know, the desktop right here, they're all running into the left-hand side of the switch uh, right there. And the reason I've got the two switches is I don't need two switches. And of course, you can see that there's one switch right here, uh, and that will be enough because I can actually have everything running into that. But the reason we've got two is for high availability and also for redundancy. So that, for example, I've got my um, Ethernet ports. So I've got, for example, this server right here. I've got uh, three Ethernet cards in it. Uh, and they're not all, or not all three are running into this one switch because if I lose that switch, then I lose all connection into that server. So I've got it split where I've got a couple running into here and then I've also got one running into here. And of course, in a perfect world, you would always have your ports split. So if you had six or eight ethernet ports, let's say you had eight ethernet ports on a server, you would run four of them into one switch and four into another switch. And that's always good practice when you are setting up your environment. So if you have seen my other video where I do show you the other lab, what you'll see right here is a yellow cable. This is still a standard cable, uh, but this is now connected into my other lab. Uh, so it makes it very, very easy to be able to mix and match my two labs together and make sure that they are connected. So uh, in my place, I've actually got cabling behind the walls between the different rooms so I can easily connect one through to the other. And I've made it yellow so that I'm very, very clear that this is the uplink cable that is connecting my two subnets together, essentially. I've got a router in between them. Uh, and then all I have to do is if I need to disable that, I can do that on the switch, but I can easily just come and unplug that if I just want to make this complete lab right here in this rack completely isolated to the rest of the network. So let me give you a brief overview. Everything is now racked, it's powered on, it looks really, really cool. Let's talk about what we're setting up on these units. Now, what we're gonna be doing is the three servers that we're seeing, so the three Dell servers, they're gonna be installed with something called VMware's ESXi, which is essentially a virtualization technology to actually convert these uh, servers into virtualization hosts so that we can actually install multiple virtual machines onto them. 
That's something that is pretty common nowadays in businesses. You don't have physical servers, one per function. You have virtual machines, which essentially allows one physical computer to one physical server to be able to run multiple virtual machines. Now the unit down the bottom being our Synology NAS is a storage unit and that is where all of my virtual machines are sitting. All the data, all the VMs sit on that. It's connected onto the network and those three servers are just using the CPU and the RAM and the resources, but the storage is actually sitting on that Synology NAS. We can then build a whole bunch of VMs. So we're gonna build ourselves a number of Windows servers, Linux servers, domain controller, DNS, DHCP, file server, web server, a few other things, including a LAMP server, which is a Linux type of environment. So there's a whole range more. If you wanna know more, check out my other video all around servers. If you wanna get some ideas around what sort of server types you can be building, do check that one out if you do want to know more about that and it should help you out. So that's it. Thank you so much for spending the time. Um, hopefully you found this video fun. Hopefully you learned something new. Please do let me know in the comments below. If you did, uh, maybe you learned something and you wanna let me know, give me a thumbs up as well on that video. Would really appreciate it. And as always, please remember to subscribe clicking on the button and on the bell, and do check out some of my other videos if you wanna learn more things about all things tech.